reasons, excuses, and blame in relationships. Sharon Hornell from here. Welcome to day 166 of our BU 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that improves us, makes us a little bit better than the day before. So we're continually moving toward becoming the best version of ourselves, the person we want to be on the planet so we can set the example for other people. So today, <clears throat> our relationship related, our relationship well being related, because we want well being in every area and aspect of our life, especially relationships, uh, <clears throat> is reasons, excuses, blame, accusing, etc., and how that plays out in our relationships. Now, I did a bunch of research on the reason businesses fail because I got sidetracked, and sometimes I do that. And it really boils down to a lot of planning and relationships and how we conduct ourselves. Are we behaving in ways that are consistent with who we really are that match our core values and morals or not? And that also ends up being reasons and excuses and blame. Now to me and to the internet and the definition about reasons in uh, relationships and the, the distinction between reasons and excuses and then blame. Blame is kind of part of excuses in my opinion. So reasons are used to explain and it, they imply that uh, fault is sincerely recognized and accepted. So you take responsibility and are accountable for the results that happen in your relationships. Guess what? The only things we can control, the only things we can change, the only things we personally have any power over in any area and aspect of our life, but especially in relationships because relationships involve other people, unless we're talking about the relationship with ourselves. And guess what? We're responsible for that too because we're both sides of that relationship. Relationship in, infers more than one person, but we also have to remember the most important relationship on the planet is the relationship we have with ourselves. So reasons imply, they're used to explain what happened. And to me, when we're giving reasons, we're taking responsibility and we're understanding and learning the lessons from the mistakes that we make. Because guess what? We're all human. We make mistakes and we either learn from those mistakes or we repeat those mistakes until we learn the lesson. I, I wish that weren't the way it was and that it wasn't the way it's played out in my life and pretty much everybody's life I know. But the truth is, if we don't learn the lesson from the first time or the second time or the third time we make the mistake, we will make the same mistake over and over again until we get it, until it gets in our little thick skulls and we realize on a conscious level, oh, what I've been doing isn't working for me. Maybe I should try something else. The type of person I've been getting involved in romantic relationships with is the same type of person in different skin, right? Over and over and over again. A lot of us, me included, have done that, picked the wrong people for me, thinking they were what I wanted or what I should want, only to find out they were absolutely the opposite of the type of person I should be picking for me. So, you know, when you say, oh, I always date bad boys or I always pick bad boys, well, you can choose to continue to pick bad boys and then commiserate over why, the reasons why, but, but really the excuses why your relationship is so bad. Now, excuses, the distinction between excuses and reasons is we use excuses to justify, blame, defend something that happened or a fault or a choice or a decision or a mistake. And so instead of taking responsibility and being accountable and then fixing and learning from and, and changing what we need to change about ourselves that we have control over, we just make excuses and we pile out the excuses and all the reasons because reasons can be dressed up like excuses when we are not taking responsibility for what happened. Now, things outside of our control are not our responsibility. So whenever you see annual reports for businesses, and maybe this is why I look for all the reasons businesses fail, because there's all these reasons that businesses give for failing. Lots of businesses fail, right? Huge percentage. I think it's 80% uh, don't survive their first year, or 80% survive their first year, but 20% fail. 50% in five years, and only 33% in 10 years. Now, I think those are really optimistic statistics, but they were 
uh, on one source on the internet. I don't even remember what source because I was like, Meh. if they say 95% of businesses fail in the first 10 years, that doesn't add up. That Those statistics don't make sense. And guess what? Statistics a lot of times don't make sense because you can manipulate and make statistics show and prove anything you want. That's why when people say we're following the science or the statistics show or the polls show, you're like, well, poppycock, unless you know all the variables that go into a poll or a statistic or a scientific experiment and the hypothesis and stuff, you don't have a way of knowing whether the results that they're showing you are really meaningful or not. A lot of times they're not even meaningful. A lot of the tests that pharmaceutical companies do on drugs, the FDA does on different types of food sources and things, they're not really scientifically based and they're not really non-biased because they're done by the companies that are looking for approval of their drugs or their food sources, etc. So it's, it's kind of a, a gray area based on my personal experience, of course. So reasons versus excuses. Now yesterday I did a little thing that was kind of fun and I'm kind of embarrassed to show you, but I did a little tally of criticism and judgment. And whenever I was judgmental or critical of something or I was judgmental or critical of myself or I heard other people being judgmental or critical. Now, I actually was out in the world yesterday, so it was a more valid experiment than a lot of days when I'm just in my home office. So. I liked the tally strategy, so our action item today is going to be to tally up every time we or someone else assesses blame or ex makes excuses or gives reasons. Now, again, the difference between reasons and excuses or blame is whether you're taking responsibility or not. Now, again, we can only take responsibility for the things that we can control. So a lot of businesses went out of businesses and use the excuse or the reason of the COVID-19 pandemic. And yes, millions of businesses were shut down, actually probably more than that, millions and millions and millions and hundreds of millions of businesses. Anyway, lots of businesses were shut down or impeded, yet some of those businesses found ways to continue to serve the people that they serve and survive because they're like, yeah, we can't do things the way we used to, but we're gonna figure out a way to do what we need to do to get by. Millions of people were sent home without paychecks, but they had to find ways to survive and continue to move forward and provide for their family, homeschool their kids, etc. They couldn't just shut down and stop and not do anything during the pandemic. So I love this topic and it's really, it's really important. And I'm gonna share quickly six ways to stop making excuses forever because I think it's important that we control what we can control in our life we let go of what we can't control and we stop making excuses and blaming other things that really shouldn't matter in our life at all. We are free, believe it or not, still in the United States, to create the life that we want. And nobody can stop us once we decide and choose and commit to creating that life for ourselves. Uh, you know, as long as it's legal and moral and ethical and making the world a better place, you won't be stopped from doing that, right? As long as you're not harming other people or, or you know, animals or whatever makes sense. So reasons and excuses. So what are six ways that we can stop making excuses forever? Number one, stop harping on past failures. Stop thinking about, stop even consciously and subconsciously, stop talking about, stop sharing all of the past mistakes that you've made. Just let them go. Now, it helps. If you learn the lesson from those past mistakes or misfires or or missed opportunities, some people spend all of their time commiserating over a missed opportunity that they had 20 years ago. And instead of just looking for another opportunity because they're all around us all the time, they're still harping about that missed opportunity, that once in a lifetime opportunity when they didn't buy that Apple stock or they didn't buy that whatever that they should have. Now it's cryptocurrency, I suppose. Number two, take responsibility for your mistakes. Guess what? We all make mistakes, and the only way you can learn from them is we can say, oh my God, I wish I wouldn't have said that. Oh my goodness, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Oh my goodness, and, and what am I going to do next time to make sure I don't make that same silly mistake? Next time I'm not going to tell my significant other that he or she has a fat you-know-what and looks terrible in the outfit they have on. Maybe there's a better way to present that. Uh, number three, and I re 
arrange these based on how I think that the level of importance is in the steps. I said focus on and build on your strengths. Always focus and build on your strengths. Number four, stop comparing yourself to others. We are each unique, amazing, incredible, infinite being snowflakes, and we should never compare ourselves to others because nobody else on the planet has or is us. Nobody has had the same experiences. Nobody has had the same uh, opportunities. Each and every one of us are here to live the best life that we possibly can, and that includes not comparing ourselves to others. I found when I came online, I didn't really compare myself to others in the offline world. Sometimes I'd notice people in the same industry doing really cool things, and I'd be like, oh my God, that! how did they think of that? That's awesome. But I wouldn't say, oh my God, they're making more money than me, so I'm a failure. No, we, co we compare ourselves to others or model others to move ourselves forward toward what we want, not to diminish ourselves. So don't compare yourself to others. If you have the ability, and very few people do, to compare yourself to others and make that a positive and a motivating driving factor for you, use it because that's a strength. But if you don't, if you find yourself, I found when I came online, I was comparing myself to others. I was like, oh my gosh, I have all this experience and this is the results I'm getting. And all these other people, and believe me, a lot of what's being presented is not the truth, are making gazillions of dollars, have a gazillion followers, you know, a, a billion followers, gazillions of dollars. And I've been in business about the same amount of time as they have. Why am I not being the same? And I found that shut me down and stopped me in my tracks because it wasn't motivating. It was actually demotivating. And then it created that whole imposter syndrome, which was something I'd never heard of until I came online. And so we have to be careful what we let in to our subconscious and our conscious mind. We just have to filter it out and say, okay, if it doesn't add value and move me toward where I want to go, I got this bubble around me and I just filter it out. It doesn't even get in. And if it does help me, if it's something I need to see right now, I'll notice it and pay attention to it. We all do that subconsciously and based on our experiences and, and things that we've learned along the way, we already have that bubble. We might as well design that bubble and that filter to benefit us versus just letting it happen uh, willy-nilly. So, uh, number five was learn to pick yourself up after falling down. Again, we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to say or do the wrong thing, especially in our relationships. Know how to say you're sorry and sincerely apologize and, and fix the damage that you caused if it's fixable. Guess what? There are things we do and say in relationships that are unforgivable and we're not meant to be in the relationship with that individual. So we should just move on and let it go. Doesn't mean we don't try to, to repair the damage that we cause, but sometimes we inadvertently cause damage to people via our relationships without even knowing it. Sometimes we just don't love the person back or we don't have the same type feelings and don't want the same type of relationship from them as they want from us. And that can hurt their feelings, which is their responsibility to deal with, but we also don't have to be unkind or cruel. We can take responsibility for our, our participation in the relationship at all. And then finally, number six, uh, identify your weaknesses and continue to work on them. And I always add on this, if it's essential that you do, because just like all of us making mistakes, we all have things that we're str our, our strengths we're good at, we're awesome at, natural talents and abilities and ways of being. We all have things that, number one, we're, we are weaknesses for us. We're not good at them. And it's probably because we have no interest in them. I believe all of us as human beings can get good at and be good and acquire and figure out and learn anything we want to. But if we don't want to, it's not going to be a strength for us. And I say only work on those areas if it's essential for what you want to create in your life. If it doesn't matter, outsource it. Find someone else to do it for you. Hire it out. I do that with housework. I don't like it. I don't want to get good at it. Do I know how to do it? Can I do it? Did I do it for decades? Yes. Did I always dislike it? Yes. Why? Because I'm not the least bit interested in it. Now I have a sister. My youngest sister is like the best house keeper, cleaner, organizer, painter, uh, decorator on the planet. She's awesome at it because she loves doing it. She had experiences as a child that made her feel good and valued for doing those things. And she's in a relationship that makes her feel good and valued for doing those things and maintaining the lifestyle and allowing her husband to do the things that he needs to do to be successful in his profession and her son. So 
she's awesome at it. She loves to do it. She's good at it. She's gotten excellent at it. Me, not so much. I outsource that. So today, our action item. Grab a little post-it note or a piece of paper or a napkin or whatever you want and just hashtag when do I catch myself giving reasons for something. Well, I can't start my business because I don't know enough. That is the biggest false belief on the planet. Maybe not the biggest, but it's right up there at the top. My business failed because of COVID, therefore I'm a failure and I can't do anything. Let that baby go. That's just excuses. Figure out what you love to do and go out and do it. Um, so reasons, I, I did blame reasons and excuses on mine. You can do whatever you want, but I say at least do reasons and excuses. Reasons we take responsibility for, excuses we don't. Catch yourself making excuses and commit to not making excuses forever for the rest of your life. Hey, I'm not going to make an excuse. I'm going to take responsibility for everything I can in my life, everything I can to control. And excuses are for losers. Excuses are for others, not for me, because they're for people that don't take responsibility and don't move on in our life. That is my opinion. Uh, all right. I don't know what we're talking about tomorrow. My calendar isn't right in front of me. So have an awesome day. Any questions, hit me up. You can share in the comments below how you feel about doing the tally exercise. I personally think it's kind of fun. But uh, I was out and about yesterday, so I didn't have it with me all the time. But today, I'll remember to carry it with me. All right. Have an awesome day. If I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.